In the previous video, I showed you how to uh, train your own pix to pix HD network. Um, in this video, I'm going to show you how to actually generate images from that model. Uh, so I'm going to do this in Colab. Um, it's pretty similar uh, to what you might do in Paperspace. Um, and I'll try to highlight where things will change. Um, but for the most part, the, the commands here are the same that you might use in uh, Paperspace and SSH um, in the command line. So, okay, the first thing I'm going to do here is, actually, before I start, I'm going to show you um, some of the things that I trained. So let's take a look here. Let me clean up my desktop a little bit more here. Okay, so inside of this folder. So I've just downloaded these files. Um, I've got a W trained. These are uh, a couple of checkpoints and images that I want to uh, work with. Um, so you'll see here that uh, basically this generated the latest. Uh, this is the latest generator. If I look at that image, this is for the image that it produced. Um, and for the Epoch 100, it produced an image that looks like this. Um, I'll show you why I have two of these in a minute, but um, basically uh, the generator that I want to use for sometimes it's going to be the latest and other times it's going to be 100. Uh, latest basically uh, equates to Epoch 200 because I only trained for 200. So when it was done, this is what I got. Uh, lastly, I'm going to also show you what is inside of this was the training or this was the data set that I used. So see here it's named train A, train B. Um, train A was a series of canny edge images. Uh, train B was a series of these textures. Cool. So uh, let's jump back to Colab really quickly. Uh, so here I'm just going to run. This is the cell that is going to install a bunch of uh, items. Um, it just installs the uh, pix to pix library, it installs a uh, dependency called dominate, and then it uh, moves into that folder. Um, you'll see here that I've named a folder uh, make dir trained. So I tried to name this checkpoints before and it kept getting errors. So I have no idea if that's like a collab bug or something. Uh, basically now I've named it trained. So just think your checkpoints go in a folder named trained. So if I refresh over here, you'll see now that I have a folder. Um, the next thing that I need to do is, uh, this is going to be where I place all my data. Um, I named it W because that was the data set I was running on. You can name it whatever you want, just make sure that it's named the same through here. And then you'll see we're going to create a folder called uh, Test A. So whereas this folder here is named Train A, um, I'm going to make a folder named Test A. Now in Colab, you don't need to upload all of your trained files. You just need to upload what you want to train off of or test off of. Um, so I'm just going to make this uh, folder. I'm not going to make a train A or train B. Um, it's unnecessary for this. And if I go in here, you'll see now I have a train W and I have a data sets W test A. Um, I'm going to skip Colab, but if you wanted to sync between your, your uh, Google Drive and Colab, you could. I'm going to skip this cell though. So now we're going to look at actually testing this. Um, now in order to test this, I need to upload some files. Um, I'm going to upload. All of, I'm going to upload a hand, a hand of the a handful of images um, from this trained folder. It would be like 15 or so, um, and I'm just going to upload those to test A. This is all going to get uploaded. Um, the next thing I need to upload are all of my uh, my trained files. So um, I'm actually going to take a little break here. These are really really big files. Um, this one is 730 megabytes, uh, so these are going to take a while to upload. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag these into the train W folder, and I'm just going to let this upload for a little bit. Um, and when it's done, I'll be back. Okay, I'm just about done here, um, and I realized I should. I'll just do some like uh, little bonus content while I have you here. Um, so this is a command uh, I've talked about this before, but Nvidia SMI is a command just to sort of see what your uh, machine is running. So maybe you want to find out what GPU you're actually running when you're on Colab. So what you can do is you can type in uh, Interabang NVIDIA SMI and you hit return. Um, basically, because I'm not running any commands, I can or running any cells. I can run this. So you'll see, I'm running a Tesla P100, which is a pretty nice machine. Um, it has 16 uh, gigabytes of GPU, um, and there's no other processes running. Um, this is pretty helpful. Uh, you can just sort of keep an eye on this. Uh, you know, it will generally change. Like if I were to open up a brand new Colab and run it, I might get a, a K80 or something else. Um, my guess is because I'm running Colab Pro, I'm probably often going to end up with a P100. Um, it tends to be that Colab Pro will give you uh, the better machine. So this is a nice command just to run. You can just keep an eye on it. Uh, 
maybe you know you want to get the P100 because it's faster. Like you could restart your machine a bunch of times and see if you randomly get one. Uh, just something worth checking on. Uh, but this is a helpful command to run just to check on things. Um, okay, so it looks like my files are now uploaded. So I'm going to come up here where my line is and I'm going to start to run this. So um, let me explain this command to you a little bit. Um, so again, remember that I am inside of my pix to pix hd folder. I'm obviously going to run the test command, so python test data root. So this points to my data set. So again, all I need is the test a. So I'm just going to point it to the w. Uh, and as long as I point it to that folder, it'll find the right folder within there. Uh, the name. So name matters because uh, I want it to find the trained files inside of my w folder. Um, so it's important that these match. Uh, also, this will be the name used to uh, create your uh, results folder. Uh, NetG global. So there's also a local option. I'm actually not sure what this means. All I know is that the local has given me uh, bad results in the past, so I'm just using go global now. Uh, resize a crop. So I don't want to crop or resize any of the images that I'm passing it uh, in the test stage. Um, label uh, NC0 and no instance. Uh, I think I talked about these in the training section. Um, this just basically says we're not using label maps and we're not using segmentation filters, so don't use them. Um, how many? So I want 20. So basically I uploaded, I don't know, a random number, probably about 30 images here. Um, and I want to take 20 of them. And I think it does it randomly. Um, let's just drop that down to 10 because I might not actually have 20 up here. I didn't count. Um, so I think it grabs it randomly. If not, it grabs them numerically, in which case you'll always get the same 10. Um, but I just want to grab 10 of these and generate images from them. Um, the checkpoints directory. So I had to edit this because I named my uh, folder trained um, because normally it defaults to checkpoints and for whatever reason I couldn't make that folder or it was throwing errors and whatever. So I just named it trained. Um, so again, this is going to point at this folder which says like where are my checkpoints? Well, my checkpoints are these uh, these .pth files here. Um, and then lastly, uh, which epoch, which I'm going to delete for now. I'm going to just cut it actually. Um, the which epoch uh, defaults to latest. So I'm just going to run this and uh, we'll generate some images. It takes a little while to get set up and IOC processing images takes seconds. Um, so we're done with that. So now when I come over here and refresh my folders, you'll see I've got a new one called results. Inside there is a W. Inside of here is test latest. And inside of here is images. Now I want to expand this a little bit just so I can see. So each of these has an input label and a synthesized image. Your input label is your candy edges. And your synthesized image is what it produces when it's done. Um, just for my own sake, I'm just going to download this. It's a little bit easier than writing code to display it. And when I open that, you'll see I've got an image. Uh, and it looks pretty close to what I would expect. Um, because if I go and look at um, my trained images, if I look at 200, um, you'll see it's got like some interesting little textures, or it tends to be grayscale. So I think a lot of these will end up being grayscale. So let me just download a couple more of these. So I get some edges, I get some blurriness. That one actually comes out pretty good. Um, it's a pretty good looking image. So uh, that worked pretty well. Um, so one thing to know, uh, the way that we train this in pix to pix hd uh, with using canny edges is that it is a deterministic model. Um, so if I were to run this exact canny edge again, I would get the exact same image out of it. Um, deterministic just means it's usually it's the same image when, when you produce it. Like you don't get a different image. Uh, that's what's called multimodal. Um, I have other videos on multimodal, but basically, like this will generate generally the same image. So you don't need to run this multiple times. You won't get that. You won't get different results. I keep saying that different, but you actually won't get different results at all. Um, okay. So one way to actually get different images is to use a different checkpoint, um, and that's why I upload this epoch 100. So if I come back up here, to the top of this cell, and I'm gonna close this again just to sort of myself some space and I go to the end of the line and I uh, paste back in what was already there which is which epoch so which epoch 100 uh, this will actually tell me which checkpoint file to go to look at um, so if you don't include it it just looks for the latest which is this uh, in this case I'm saying hey actually grab me which epoch 100 um, so grab the 100th file 
or the 100 Uh If you enter in a number here that doesn't exist over here, it's going to throw an error. Uh, this file, this number has to correspond to a file that exists. So let's run this again. And you'll see now this is run. Um, if I come back over here and refresh my folder, I now have a test 100 and a test latest. Um, and let me just see images, images. So it does look like it is grabbing them in a numbered order. So it's not random. So you can actually look at, you can actually compare these images. So let's download this one um, and this one and this one. Cool. So now if I open these together, so let's do 360 and 360. Um, so this is what it looked like at what 100. This is 100, and this is uh, the latest, so 200. So those are pretty different images. Um, one of the things you'll notice is that because this is 100, it's got these sort of checkerboard patterns. It's not as it's not as fully trained, um, but it does give you different images. So like it's sort of nice to be able to see some of the color differences, right? Um, so this is sort of the trade-off is that because it's earlier, it also like looks a little different. Um, so let's also look at randomness nine. So this one over 100 kind of sucks. It's definitely ugly. This looks better, but like also doesn't have a lot of detail and has a little bit of checker wording still. So, um, you know, with each of these, you're going to get different images. This is, this one turned out pretty well. Um, and that one turned out pretty well too. I sort of like these. Um, so again, like, here I've gotten different images out of just using different epochs. Um, so that's pretty much it for generating images. Um, there's not really anything more uh, to Pix to Pix HD. It's pretty straightforward. Um, again, you, you're it's looking at an image and translating that image into what it's been trained to, tr to translate it to. So unlike uh, StyleGAN, which you're looking at vectors, that sort of thing. Um, now, some of my students had asked, how do I animate this? Uh, well, the way to animate it is to actually generate some lines so you would actually take some canny edges, or maybe you would take a video and generate canny edges from that video, um, break them up into frames and animate that, and then feed that those frames into this model. Um, and it would generate a, uh, my guess is it would generate an image that is a little bit noisy uh, in terms of the animation, but it would still work. Um, another way to do this is actually to open up like Photoshop, um, create a Photoshop file, uh, name it, you know, or keep, make it 1024 by 1024, which is the size of this model, um, and then take like a one pixel pencil and just start drawing edges. Um, and there's ways to record your screen without the cursor. So you would record your screen um, and you would upload and you would basically turn that video uh, of your recording into frames. Then you would upload those frames here again and do this process again. Um, maybe I'll do a, a second video uh, at a later, later date that actually could like automate some of that process pretty easily. Um, so I'll drop this collab in the video description. Um, otherwise, feel free to ask questions in the comments or find me on my Slack channel. Thanks.